Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 for Monday, October 16th, 2023. Uh, an incredible day here in the markets. It um, is bringing about an alternate count, which I'm not sure that I actually presented over the weekend on the uh, podcast. If I didn't, I apologize, uh, because here we are in the midst of what could be uh, the alternate count being flipped over into preferred status. So let me just kind of do a quick review right now as things stand. I'm going to start here on the four-hour charts here in the NASDAQ. And still we have that intermediate wave one, intermediate wave two, which I'm fairly satisfied with as is. Then we have the minor wave one and what I had marked as minor wave two and minuet wave one. But then today kind of blew minuet wave one out of the water, minute uh, minuet wave two out of the water, excuse me, minute wave one kind of went by the wayside as I attempted to go back in and take a look at really what was going on. So I went back over to my hourly chart. Now, again, in the NASDAQ, it's still one, two, three, four, five is how I'm counting it. But it just gets a little bit squirrely when it when I have to look at it and it really becomes more of a one or an A, B, one, two, three, four, five, C. Now, yes, they're, they're, they're very much can be interchangeable. And particularly on the smaller uh, waves. So in other words, it's like minute, minuet, et cetera. There can be a lot of like, mm, well, you're going like, to stretch it a little bit here and there. <laughs> Excuse me. So what I have done is I've gone back in, and I'm going to move back quickly out, back out to that four-hour chart. Again, leaving the basic in, we're in a, still in a minor wave two. Now, what does this tell me then? We did an ABC, then we did an ABC X. Now I'm going to go back down to the hourly chart. I know a lot of people are going to be screaming, going like, what? But stay with me. The market has moved into this period where it, it's today anyway, there came, well, investors are preparing for earnings. And because we've already been hyped up with everybody's going to do these breakneck speed earnings. And gee, the banks, look, the banks all made money. So therefore, everybody else is going to make money, even though we get downgrade after downgrade after down, price reduction, downgrade type stuff all morning. So again, market perception. Apple down all session, battling to sell basically, because they kept buying basket after basket of all the stocks and in, in both and in, in, in the, the various indexes where Apple sits. So we had this disjointed type market. But once Nvidia caught on, once Microsoft and Meta, Netflix and Tesla, which all were down initially, caught on to the to the up upswing, there was no there was no turning back and they were not going to give it up. So I think really what it kind of became today was zero DTE options and the power of the traders or the firms that are in there trading these and the gamma flow going back and forth and back and forth and the power that having to shift and make adjustments can do to, to the S&P future, number one, to the SPX when you're doing the baskets. So again, <clears throat> a lot took place in, in the Qs, in the spiders, in the ES, and in the SPX, all in the options, the zero DTE options. And so that kind of produced this enormous rally in the Dow, a strong 50 point day in the S&P in the SPX i believe that it was uh well also 50 but they brought it back down so it was a 50 plus day in the SPX and so those are pretty big those are pretty big days 
to get when you're looking at you know the S and P five hundred. That's fifty points. That's a that's a that's a big day. So, but the Dow three hundred, the Nasdaq one hundred and eighty, and there were periods it was up over two hundred today. So again, this is, I believe, just moving in, uh, buying everything under the sun. You saw again. They, 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 I think they come in, they do this dispersion trade because they think it's the best thing since sliced bread. When volatility gets up over 19 to 20, they're like, we got to sell that vol, take that money and buy the underlying. Why? Well, be the underlying volatility, I should say. Why? Well, because they're going to report their earnings and orange is going to be good. So index is going to go up. So we want to be short that vol because the volatility should go down. So short that vol, they buy the vol in the underlying and via buying the premium in the calls, primarily. And then we're off to the races. Now, what's that got to say about the fact that we still have a very serious situation brewing in the Middle East? We have a very serious situation kind of maybe coming to fruition in the South China Sea. You know, it's like China's been kind of silent here, right? But we've got stuff going on over there. We got stuff going on between Russia and China. We got stuff going on between North Korea and Russia. So there's still a lot of geopolitical things happening that could toss the cookies of the market in a heartbeat. And so I'm going to be very careful. But and 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 here's here's the challenge because I know many of you uh, commented on the podcast and really we're asking very valid questions and it's because we're all putting on positions and it could make it very difficult when you get these huge swings and you want your position melt in front of you if you were short in terms of where's where's your out where's where's your hedge so with that in mind i just really want to say that I still believe in that we're in a larger down size side move and that it will come in. Now that does not suggest that I'm, you know, we might not have, or we might have to readjust even if we move out. So let me just put it this way. Here is the alternate view that we're going to do a second ABC and that kind of projects, right? If this is the A, the B of the first or the of the second A wave, and maybe we get a little bit more because I can't really count five within C just yet. So I would expect that we get another little pop above today's high, 15,336, 37, that we get a little pop over there, puts the ABC in, then we get a B wave down, and then we get a C wave up. The second ABC does not necessarily have to be the same size as the first ABC. Now, in fact, it could still be, it could still be, if I take this back down, let me go into the hourly chart again, and I leave this as a minute first wave. Minute wave two still has a little bit more upside, right? ABC, minute two. So I tangled with it and I thought, mm, what's it going to do? How are we going to get there? So let me just readjust then if that's the case. So I'm going to get both sides of this case because this is not easy. If it's an X wave, then I know I'm going to go above this level. If it's going to remain that I can do one, two, three, four, five, because I tell you, it is valid. And then this is going to be, well, I'm just going to change it. Let's just do it. And then... I'm going to give you the breakpoints, right? So I've do that one. I got an ABC. It's going to be a wave two. So what I really want to do is I have, first of all, just well, let's use these because I'm going to do the C wave. That's what I'm looking to complete. So we got here to here to here. And here we got our C wave. Well, 1.618 wave C, 1.618 of A got, got blasted and actually turned into support this afternoon. 2.618 is 15,410. And that's still below the height of minor wave two, because that's what would sit here again. So in fact, I, 
I'm I, I'm probably going to have to eat my words, but what I'm going to do is put the other back up and leave it that way overnight. And with the, with the thought process being oh, the wrong one, cancel. Uh, let's activate that guy. Stick it up here and then edit it. And so you know, if we bear in mind what the alternate is so that we still because i i, I literally not really be looking for much more above 15000 what was that high 15467 and i had 15600 so yes it's another 200 points but what we're going to do i'm going to leave it here the alternate would come into play if it if it come on jeez if it breaks above uh, 15,410, uh, 15, that's going to lean it pretty heavily in the other direction um, because we're not looking for it to get above 15,467. So let's leave it at 15,467, the high of where I'm marking minor wave two. If it breaks that, then we know that it's the X and we're getting that double ABC. So I'm going to leave it in that fashion. Now, how do you want to trade this? I cannot tell you how to trade. But I can say that there are positions that you can put on and then work. You're going to have to work your position. If we're believing in the downside, remember, nothing goes straight down. We, we have waited and waited and waited. And it becomes very a game of patience. It becomes a game of why isn't the world paying attention or why aren't traders paying attention to what's really happening around them? They are. It's just that they're getting pushed and pulled by the daily grind with zero DTE options. And that's pure unadulterated trading it has nothing to do with being bullish or bearish. It really does not. It has nothing to do with we got a war building and going on in the Middle East, that we have a Fed that may or may not be in trouble, that we have an economy that may or may not be in trouble, that we have a House of Representatives that may or may not be in trouble. So we got all these things that need to be resolved and come to some type of picture that's going to make sense to everybody. So that's all that's left out there hanging. Now, and then on the top of it, we got earnings that everybody thinks are going to be fantastic. So here we go. What do they want to pay attention to? So when we're dealing with these options that expire each and every day, it offers a lot of opportunities and they're day trading. And I'm telling you, they're doing it in size. They're doing it in incredible, incredible size. And they, they're playing, you know, gamma. And they're, it just... It's where they want to pin it, well, what level they're going to be able to get it to. And I'm telling you, you can watch it. And at the end of the day, like today, for example, 405 was big in the S&P. It dropped below 404. It dropped back to 4,400. And they pushed it. They pushed it all the way back and got it back above. So... It just gets crazy, I'm telling you. Anyway, I'm going to leave it like this. And then NASDAQ, I'm going to leave that minor two there. On the basis that, understand, here's the alternate. If it breaks 15,467, it breaks above this high. This is no longer a minuet wave two or minute wave two correcting minute wave one. This one will then turn into an X and this turns into a double ABC. Now we may get an ABC up. In fact, maybe it'll complete overnight or maybe that is the completion point and we just start heading lower again. And on that basis, we'd be looking for, well, it could be a B wave. But if it's if this is one, two, it would I would and gonna kick off a third, then you're looking for it to just really kind of go continuation to the upside would suggest that we get one more leg up and that's 15,410. But now we got the story if it goes above there. So 15,410 holds it and we turn from here, same deal, one, two, one, two, we're dropping. And it should drop and not look back. So again, I keep stating that. 
because that's what I'm going to be looking for to give me some confirmation. First, the the uh, structure needs to form five waves down, being that it's a third of a third. It needs to pick up this is because of minor three. So it's minute three within minor three within an immediate three. It needs to just go. So as long as it's going to play these games and play these up and down and going to go with strength be pushed up, then it's not a third. That's not what happens inside a third wave. So those of you that thought that, you're correct. It's not a third. So you got to take a step back and you got to take a look. It's like, what can it be? Now, my bigger picture, I got to tell you, my bigger picture is not changing. It's not changing. I can go out to my daily and it's like, I'm still... That's in, I'm pretty safe with that one, and I'm feeling pretty good about this one. So I think this is is as an intermediate wave one. So if it continues to break and we start heading up towards this, it just makes this A B C X, and now we're just still and going to do another intermediate degree A B C to complete that primary B. So that's the 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 upper level alternate. I'm not looking for that, but who knows what this market truly wants to do. They're just going to do what they want to do, period. And so I've got to fit myself in. Now, whether it fits reality, whether it fits the, the fundamentals, whether it fits anything, it really doesn't make any difference. It's where the algorithms are going to be taking it. And they're all programmed. And trust me, algorithms have no emotions, nor do they pay attention to brewing situations around the country or internationally. They just do. They just do what they're programmed to do. So here we are. Now, what we did today, let me just take a quick peek. We broke back above the 50. It did spike, but it didn't. It slowed down. But at, that's on the daily. That's... That's bullish. And if I took it out to a candle, the candlestick's going to be be a rather bullish candle. Okay. And it came and it closed above the 50. So that reverses everything. Now, it could be a one day where we get a little bit and then we nosedive and then it breaks back below and continues to go down. We've seen that happen as well. So. We got a lot to keep our eyes on. Right now, if you're working on moving averages, yep, they're considered lagging. But because it broke and it closed above, I kind of would be looking for it to go higher still. Now, bringing it back down to the four hour, where do our moving averages sit here? Well, we kind of got above the four hour 200. And we kind of thrust it a little bit, right? There we are. And close. We came down below it. And once we, when we rebroke it, it ding, 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 ding. That was that uh, one o'clock Eastern slide. And then they went back. And as soon as they broke back above it, ding, 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 took it up to a new high. So again, algorithms are, are functioning and they're working on that. It went across that moving average. Boom, go. Keep buying. So you can see that the that the moving averages are coming a little bit disjointed here. And that's being very clean as to let's, let's look at the wave pattern. Now I'm breaking finally. Let's take a look at the hourly. On the hourly, we were above. And now, right now, we're resting and sitting right at the hourly 100 simple moving average. We break above, we break below. We break above, we break below. So again, if this indeed completed one, two, three, four, five, I don't know, this is kind of weird, but if this completed it and we can put a C up there and then put the minute two up there, this should just go. I mean, literally folks, it should just go. It shouldn't stop. Now that's the NASDAQ. Let's go take a look at the S&P, see where that one sits. Hourly chart. The S&P, actually, when I got down here on this hourly and I took a look, I'm like, oh, man, 
what what kind of mess is all this? One, two, three, four, that doesn't work. So in here, uh, my error actually for not seeing that this basically was an ABC, ABC, one, two, three, four, five. That's my bad. I will own that one. And <clears throat> what I can do is take this out to a line chart. There we came very clear. Three, three, five. And now we're doing one, two, three, four, five up. Could be an A, B, and this is the C. So, you know, again, and this, so there's going to be all kinds of things that, that people are going to talk about here. And and I will I will answer you. And I may say, yep, that's valid or nope, that's not valid. But now I'm seeing where I made my mistake and need to own it. And I will. So back out to the four-hour chart. What we got going on. I still believe that this is minor one. So we got minor wave two still in progress. If this is an ABC, which I believe it can be, and I have labeled it as such, I put the minor two there, then this should never have happened. Not with this intensity. So ABC X. So whether or not I put that as an X wave in the NASDAQ, this is kind of telling me X. So, which is why I did do it in the NASDAQ, but the NASDAQ is a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to leave it for right now, but here, what a picture this is presenting. And it's not easy. It's not easy. And to really try to decide what do traders want to do? It's like nothing. They're following the leader, which happens to be zero DTE options at the moment. Whatever you guys want, I want. Even as day traders, we're just following the bouncing price. That's it. And, and looking for follow through. And there were periods that they came in and they nailed it, nailed it, nailed it. And then you're looking for some additional follow through. And then they're going to start it again. And it stopped and just ran it right up your nose. So not an easy day. Made money. But there were periods where it was like, wow, what are you guys doing? And you had to have some really move very quickly, some fancy footwork, as I call it, to flip things around and get back in there and keep trading. So not easy. But right now, what we have is uh, the second ABC, and I'm just throwing in some FIB extensions. First ABC, X-Wave, second ABC, 618, brings us up to 4460, which was always, always has been, for the minor two, a, a resistance level. That remains. Then we have 4520 to 4535. Remember, wave two can and often does retrace most of the first wave. And that would be the case. And I know I've said it more than once. So if it's working into a double ABC, it can certainly get close, not, not above that. Because again, remember, above 4598 invalidates the minor one. Then it becomes an a larger ABC down to here. And that could be an X wave. And we're doing another larger intermediate degree ABC. So lots of things, lots of things to consider. And I don't shove them all out there at the same time, because if I did, everybody would be like, well, what do you really think, Michael? And it's like, well, what I really think is that we're going to go down. But if I didn't tell you what the alternate count was, and you see a move like today, again, on the four-hour chart, you're like, well, that doesn't look so bad. But I want to tell you when you were trading it, this thing was flipping around 10, 20 points, the, the S&P, right? And, and not that it's got the, the, the biggest range on the day. Let me just take a peek. What the range was today, the range was 44.14 high, 
excuse me, 4354 low. That truly, that's 60 point swing. Because it went from that high to the low, and then it ended up back 4406. And they're trying to, it's like, where do you want to mark it, guys? Where do you want to, what, what mark do you want on this thing? And obviously, they're going to, they're trying to mark it higher. So, you know, or it's not they want to mark it lower. It just depends on, on you know, what where they want it. So, and it's very fluid. Now, let me look real quick. Look at the jumbled mess that these moving averages have become. Here's the 20, still angling lower against that, that rally today. The 50 still angling lower, and it sits at 44.53, right below the 44.60 resistance. So I have a little bit of strong resistance. What's right above that resistance at 44.75? The 100, the daily 100. So we've got a little confluence of resistance between 44.53 and 44.75. Could that complete this whole picture? It could. It could. ABC gets up into here. Right, because that's the 618. The 100 is 44, 45.35. Above that, 1618, no, that breaks that and it becomes something totally different. But it can get up to 45.35 for sure. And it has additional resistance up to 45.65. Pretty much above there, no, it's going to make me uncomfortable in terms of the count. So day by day here. Day by day. And I know so many of you got short and so many of you are waiting for the world to end here. And I I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but we're on hold. And but again, but again, but again, it can change in a heartbeat very, very quickly. I am um <clears throat> gonna come kind of complete it there. Let's do a quick recap. ABC X. And then we're in another ABC, still under the minor two. We know what our top level is for this. 45.98 minor two would get canceled, would become invalidated on a break above. Uh, if we go up another 50 from here, we're sitting right there at resistance, right in that pocket of resistance on the daily where we have the confluence of moving averages plus the fibs. 44.59 is the exact level. And that's if we had 50 to that, you're at 44.56. So you're right there. So, yeah, you know, we could get, and if we get a little bit of a downturn and then an upturn, who knows? And God knows what could happen overnight. So, a lot going on. As far as trading, folks, what I really do want, I, I know I mentioned it, but what I really do want to emphasize hedging, hedging, hedging. Whatever you got, you can hedge it. If you're going to carry it overnight, you can hedge it. Overnight volatility is going to be killing because intraday volatility is very killing. So you're going to want to be able to hedge. Um, and that's something, if you're not sure how to do it, then you better learn because it's, I don't think it's the volatility is not going to get a whole lot less. All right, that's it for today. Next update will be on Tuesday, October the 17th.